the hair, the deep dude. Oh, that Okay. Who likes a brother? Fuck off, we're self isolated. <laughs> Welcome to Living La Vida Lockdown, the online comedy chat show hosted by me, Rob Mulholland. Good to have you along. Uh, today, I have got some awesome guests. It's going to be a good laugh, I'm sure. I'll introduce them to you. Uh, right next to me over here, we have Laura Lex. Hiya. Yay. And below me, right here, we have got Fumbi Amateo. Hello, hey, Fumbi. Hey. And down in this corner, we've got Nigel Ung. Hello, 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 hello. Good to have you all here. Thank you very much for coming on. I know you're all very busy. You've got a lot of places to be currently. <laughs> like, this has been the hard thing with this. When someone's been like, oh, I can't make it. What the fuck else are you doing? <laughs> like, How do they cancel on you? I oh, say I can't do it anymore. Mate, you'd be you wouldn't believe the amount of people who've done that. Like, the amount of people, oh, something's come up. No, it fucking hasn't. You just can't be asked. It's fine. Tell me you can't be asked. Like, I will totally accept that. If someone's just like, mate, I just can't be fucked. I can't really be bothered. I will take that as an answer. But don't lie to me and tell me you've got a job. They need to do their, their, their one run of the day at 4 p.m. Yeah, exactly Rob. at 4.20. <laughs> like, yeah, they're just, oh, I forgot that this is my one exercise time. I've got a meeting. I'm going to jump that. Sorry, I can't make them. I've got a meeting. Yeah, yeah with my gran. <laughs> On fucking Zoom. <laughs> but right, so uh, we'll we'll find out how you are locked down because like this is this is a lockdown chat show. Keep it light. Let's not you know if if if, if there's any tragic situations going on, save them for another show. Uh, but uh, right, we'll find out where you are locked down. Fumby, where are you at, man? What's your situation at the moment? In Hackney. I'm stuck in Hackney. <sighs> Jesus, man. I'm in the ends. Yeah. Not... Is it popping it's off around there? Yeah. There's everyone's. I've not left the house in three weeks, man. Good, that's the rules. That's what you're meant to be doing. <laughs> I've literally gone to the shop and back for three weeks. Yeah, that's that's what literally everyone in the world has been doing, man. It's not fair, man. <laughs> Do you feel like it's persecution? I missed the train station. Man, it's got to that point, hasn't it? I've been playing a, a truck simulator on Twitch because I'm I miss driving to gigs. Yeah. <laughs> so what, you drive... drive a truck to gigs? Yeah, well, essentially, I just drive a lorry for several hours a night. So I, like, I can drive, I'll, I'll like set it to drive from like Sheffield to Cardiff, and then I'll just drive. I've been trying to go viral on TikTok. Oh, how's that going, man? You're too old for fucking TikTok. No, hey, no such thing, man. Oh, TikTok is for everybody. No grey in your beard on TikTok. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the switch stuff on TikTok. Yeah, how's that going? great man Good. Oh, <laughs> oh the sweet stuff like the, the drake yeah, yeah, song i'm gonna be a tiktok star man all right well good luck to you man good luck to you on there laura are you are you on are you on tiktok i'm not I've, i downloaded the app and then i got a nosebleed and just thought you know the what same thing. i can't i can't <laughs> yeah, i really should i know it's the one that's like blowing up and it's the one that's to be on but like i've got enough like, going something. on at some point, you've got to say no. <laughs> this is this is the problem with TikTok. Is it's a physical one, isn't it? You've got to want to look like a lemon. And I I write stuff. I like jokes, but I I'm not dancing around my house. Like I want affection. I'm needy, but I'm not that needy. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I feel that like because I I am um, I just don't have those ideas. Like I don't mind like I don't mind dicking around like looking a twat. But like for like my girlfriend at home and stuff, it's like that's not really like my public comedy i don't know if that really fits with like my persona of like hey guys here's some like fucking opinions about things and also boop, 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> like so like laura where are you at are you in brighton at the moment i'm in brighton yeah which is like yeah it's been the most amazing weather for the last couple of weeks oh, that's brutal. <laughs> so, it's just been what like, like? <laughs> yeah I've, I've been i've been on a couple of runs like i've taken up running just to go and see the outside sure. world <laughs> so i've been down to look at the beach and like from my living room window you can see the downs uh, and obviously then you're going like well we're locals are we allowed to drive up there and go for a uh, walk or then we be like those people that are the the bastards. It's just the one. You don't like, want to be I, a bastard. Yeah, because like, I I lived in Brighton until pretty recently, and to be honest, it wasn't really. It, I never really settled there. It wasn't really for me. But the 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 bit where I like got it, where I like I was like, oh, I get why people live here. It was just like when you wake up on like a day like today, where it's just like, yeah. you can feel the warmth through the sun through the window, and you go, oh. And you go walk, and you're down on that beach, and it's just like crystal and blue and amazing, and just yeah. shimmering. 
Huh. It's when from like where we live. So we live up at Seven Dials, and um, and you walk down, and instead of going left, like to the pier into that main bit, you turn right. There's a great little ice cream shop, and then there's just like beach, but it's deserted. Nobody goes mm. there, no tourists, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, well, stay the fuck away from it. Yeah, I'm trying to. Are you oh, allowed to oh, swim God. in the sea as you want exercise? Because I used to do that when I lived there. Well, I don't know. I think so. Like, uh, you're allowed out to exercise. So, but yeah. then, like, just wear a disguise. Guys. Just wear Maybe a wig. tigers have got it, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> tigers have got COVID. Joe Exotic is fucked. <laughs> well, he's not because he's in solitary in prison, isn't he? Oh yeah, that's yeah. Like, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> like Nigel, where are you at, man? Where's what's your situation at the moment? Well, I'm in London by myself in a studio flat. Jesus and Christ, it's, that's it's bleak. Don't hang yourself. I'm trying not to, man. I'm trying not to. It's just too much work to hang yourself, isn't it? <laughs> you gotta buy rope. Where it do you go to me. buy rope now? All the shops are closed. <laughs> you gotta wait. For, you gotta wait five to seven business days for your rope to yeah. arrive. I gotta stand in line outside of Tesco before I hang myself. You gotta, you gotta buy rope from a Tesco. <laughs> Plus, it's the worst time to hang yourself, man. We're dealing with a virus, you know. That's that's really selfish. Yeah, it is, and no one's gonna find you for weeks. Uh, they're not gonna care. Yeah. 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 Also, I'm <laughs> six foot <laughs> seven. Really. Unless it's, unless it's corona related, you can't even say you're shot these days. It's like, you really. You know? <laughs> it is bad, man. Like, I, I've been, like, not doing dangerous activities on purpose. Just like, I can't afford an accident right now. Like, the, what the... dangerous activities were you doing? Skydiving, bungee jumping. No, Mate, like... you've just told us that for kicks, you're playing a truck simulator. <laughs> yeah. We I don't you... believe that you are doing dangerous sports Mate, at the weekend. You know what? I'm... Mate, when I said dangerous activities, I literally meant going up a wobbly stepladder. To... <laughs> <laughs> I think you just mean autoerotic asphyxiation. That's your dangerous activity, right? Mate, I will never give that up. I will never you give up. You essentially are a wobbly stepladder anyway. <laughs> this is it. Like, that's the problem. Like, I'm sure the ladder wouldn't be that wobbly if there was a normal human being on it. But like, when I go up it and like, I'm all angles and just joints that don't quite connect, and then I'm on this ladder, it's like, it's not, it, I, I, I got halfway up it and I was like, I'll do this in a few months. Like this, this does not need fixing right now. You and I are sort of the opposite person. Like I'm like a yeah. little kidney bean person, and you're like a, a straight. I do always person. powerfully feel that when me and Laura are hanging out. Like we've got some like <laughs> strong like Fellowship of the Ring vibes around <laughs> us. <laughs> That's what like when um, me and my husband did rose battle because my Tommy's not as tall as you, he's only yeah. six three, but, but he's like quite broad. You. He's like a big dude. And uh, um, when we we did rose battle against each other, and I can't remember which one of the judges was like looking at us and going, "You two look like a different species." <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is fucking true. Like, uh, man, like honestly, like it's. it's uh, thank you very much for coming, guys. Like, uh, this is what's up, man. Who won the Rose Bowl? Oh, yeah, who won? Tom. Oh, shit. Was it fair? Do you reckon he had you? Yeah, he did really well, actually. <laughs> he was he was so funny. He was amazing. And, like, because for me, because, like, because Tom's an improv comedian. He doesn't do stand-up. Mm. So, like, obviously, I've seen him perform for, like, 20 years or however long we've known each other. Um, but, um, yeah, seeing him do, like, delivered jokes, like, properly written and, like, prepping, I was like, ah, you are funny. You're very... Yeah, yeah that is really better cool. than fucking improv. Ah, oh, baby boy's very <laughs> jealous, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair, someone asked me to do an online roast battle during this, and, like, I don't think Ooh. so. Because, like, it was, like, pre-recorded as well. So you'd, like, pre-record an ins of, like, five insults and they'd sort of chop them together. But, like, surely the joy of a roast battle is looking in someone's face as you say horrific things to them and then seeing their reaction and you see people laugh at each other's jokes and just that little, like, you bounce off each other. The best bits as well are where you, like, react to something that someone's just said. And then those mm. are the bits that, like, pop off. Online, I'm not having any of it, I don't think. Someone told me to do a live set online. Yeah, man. Have you done one yet? Have you done a live set? To who? <laughs> <laughs> to who? To, to the people on Skype. God damn it. That, man. Live yeah. comedy, you don't realise how much the audience matter until you don't have them. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's everything. It's everything to stand up. It's everything, man. <sighs> I'm writing jokes thinking, where the hell am I going to perform these? <laughs> mm. Like, I, I, mean, I haven't written anything new since the lockdown started because there's just no motivation. Do you know yeah. the funny thing, Nigel? Everyone's been saying you must be writing so much. You're like, yeah. no, no, no. For what? Yeah, for what? Right, just for what? 
Yeah, for who? Like my, (laughs) the the at home stage of my writing is I have the vague idea. I go, oh, that's sort of a premise, right? I, I do that. It's like one sentence. That's what I have at home writing. That's my writing. And then I go to a gig and then I say it. Yeah. And then like I keep saying it. That's how I write. Yeah. And like you know, I can't do that now. Like I can, I can't develop past like the idea stage because like yeah. if I sit and like write out a whole little script for myself, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not gonna sit at a fucking typewriter to write out stand up. It just doesn't work for me like that. My stand up's yeah, not like that. So upset when you hit the club and it doesn't hit. This is it, yeah. man. If I spent like th- fucking three months of isolation, like sculpting this masterpiece, every word precisely right. When I go to a club and, and I say the premise, and they're immediately upset, like I'm gonna be furious with myself. Yeah, they can tell that. Yeah, you sat down in front of a computer typing that shit out. They can smell it from a mile away. Yeah, I start. Shit. I start the joke with like a. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Three months of material, you have to just rework again. And you spent yeah. three months mastering it. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, like I'm gonna start pretty much from scratch though, I think. Like I'm like all old material's gone for me when gone, yeah, it's definitely gone. You're gonna have to find yourself again because the first thing we're gonna struggle with is how do you get past all the corona material? <laughs> it's gonna be hard, man, because there's only like finding a corona angle that hasn't been done. It's gonna be fucking difficult, isn't it? But why would the compass is Corona? That's it. No one else can talk about Corona for the night. Good. Good. People are going to be fucking sick of it. And yeah. like, there's going to be a lot of bad Corona comedy floating around. And to be honest, I think that, right, I've, I've proposed this on this show before. We'll put it to you three and see what you think to this as an idea. In order to like, right, when we come back to comedy, there might be a bit of a thinning out of like gigs and stuff. A few places might not reopen. So, you know, there's going to be a bit, a few, maybe a few fewer gigs. So in order to sort it out, I think we should all start again with zero material, completely blank slate, nothing you've said before, got to start again and no Corona jokes. Let's see who survives. <laughs> You're all right, thank you. Cause I actually already had some good material. So I feel like <laughs> that really benefits- I'm just trying really to level the playing field. You, Rob, whereas- <laughs> Yeah. I kind of liked what I was doing before. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I do think, though, like I, that, my feeling through this whole thing has been like, I what don't talk about it. Like my agent kept forwarding me stuff like the BBC are paying this for scripts set in a lockdown uh, situation. Yeah. Like I would, I'd rather not watch something about some dumbasses trapped in a lockdown situation. I could just like listen to my neighbours screaming at each other <laughs> if I wanted that. Like. <laughs> you want escapism right now people should be starting to commission scripts about anything except this yeah because fuck off i don't want to watch like a two-man drama about a relationship going sour whilst eating canned food yeah fuck off forever if i ever see a video let me write that down (laughs) there'll be the woman in the background furiously kneading sourdough while the man does the diy project he's been putting up for ages and you're just careful on that wobbly (sighs) ladder (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you look like a kidney bean. Um, so the BBC. This sounds great. It's gonna. There's gonna be some horseshit stuff written. Like, and fair play, people should be creative. But I just think we need escapism. Yeah. I just write about I'm, lasers and robots and sharks and the yeah, moon and fucking yeah. vampires, whatever. I am not interested in corona-based content. No, Thank no, you. No. I'd rather become an outright YouTuber. <laughs> then write coronavirus content. Mate, you, I, I reckon you could really pull that off, you know. Like, I think you'd be a banging alt-right YouTuber. Yeah, they need diversity. They, this is they, it, man. <laughs> this is it. Like, they they really do. You'd be, you'd be, like, you'd absolutely fly. Fumby, if you want to get into it, like, mate, you, you know, they're, they're crying out for a little bit of flavor in the, in the alt-right community. <laughs> Why not me? I could be right-wing. I mean, yeah, you could. And like, also, yeah, I mean, like, there is also a problem of misogyny within them, I think. Uh, you know, like, from from, from 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 the email roundup I've oh, been getting. bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, no, they're not great guys, a lot of them. I'm sorry to disappoint God. you. But yeah, like, I would be ten a penny. I would just blend right in. Yeah, yeah. you don't, you wouldn't stand out. No, yeah. I'd have to get really extreme in my viewpoints in order to stick out. Yeah, bat soup is amazing. That's, that's your platform. <laughs> that's that's my new platform. After this, I'm the advocate for bat soup. Don't ban the bat. <laughs> Do you know the cool thing about this whole situation? Everyone's gonna remember their first gig after this. Oh yeah. man. It's going to be fire, isn't it? I'm sorry. Oh, isn't it going to be it. shit if you're somewhere bollocks? No, no, no I won't even not, care. Oh, I don't care where I am. Yeah. Oh, I, I do. I want to be at a really good club when this is over. 
I want to be no. the most rowdiest geek ever. Yeah, man. No, I, I no, I'm not losing my leave. second virginity to like a chode. I want. <laughs> no. I want to be. I want to get it right this time. Yes. <laughs> you want to be the just right. The, the lighting is going to be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want the rose petals and everything. I'm walking yeah. out to Barry White. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be with a club yeah. you really yeah. care about that you really yeah. get to know. Yeah. yeah. I had that. I had that, Laura. I had that. <laughs> like, Nigel, do you even give a fuck, though? I don't care. I'm going anywhere. Uh, I just think I'm going to be so shit. <laughs> the first gig back. Me too, man. I mean, what's my material again? Me. Where am I from? Oh, Malaysia. I, oh, yeah, I did jokes about that. Everything's gonna feel so fake now. Yeah. No. Right? After this whole pandemic, and now we're going up there, hey, Chinese takeaways, huh? They're weird. That's so weird. It's weird how they leave it on your doorstep and run away, isn't it? <laughs> Brexit. You'd be like, Brexit? What? That's it, man. About I'm really Brexit. looking forward to some people trying to bring up some shit from before. Like, cause that's, <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, there's going to be people who still like, you know, the, we all know the people who keep a topical bit for way too long to where they're like, oh, do you remember when? And like, as if anyone gives a flying fuck about any bit of news that happened before this. Yeah, anything before this is not comedy. Look, what are you talking about? Yeah, like you're gonna ignore that this has occurred. I think I'm gonna freestyle my first show, literally, and find myself. Yeah, like, just fall on my sword because what can you honestly say other than yeah. I miss you guys? Yeah, yeah, but like no one's gonna care. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be so excited to be out of their fucking house. It's gonna be like you could jangle your keys at an audience after this, <laughs> and they'll just be like, "Yes, fucking!" It's gonna be amazing. I cannot wait for that. Yeah, comedy clubs open till like three in the morning, you know, because mm. I think people are gonna need it. Yeah, man. Like people are gonna need entertainment. The raves, the raves next year, man. <laughs> like next year is the is the year of ecstasy. Like I reckon it's the second summer of love next year. I'm getting fucking on it. I don't drink anymore. I'm just banging pills constantly for the whole of 2021. That's my plan. I think we should do 2020 <laughs> again, man. Like we should just reverse. Cancel, <laughs> you think void the season? We all agree a world agreement. December 31st, we just say 2020 again. And we yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> I bought a 2020 calendar planner for this. I want to use that book again. <laughs> I don't want to buy a new one. Right. I'm in the 2020 calendar. <laughs> X. Yeah. <laughs> <All X. laughs> oh well, my God. Y- your wafer are selling merchandise for oh Euro 2020. God. Like, there's a baseball cap for Euro 2020 that is never happening. And like, I quite want to get one. You know, the tournament uh, that never that occurred. Be- See, this is the stuff we need to, we are going to kick ass when we're in our 60s and 70s and we're at pub trivia, we are going to kick ass because there will be so many questions like, why didn't, what was special about the 79th UEFA blah, blah, blah yeah, 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 thing? Yeah, yeah. And we'll be like, corona. fucking Corona. Yeah. Also, <laughs> when we're old, this is going to be such a good story to like have a go at kids with. It's like, you bloody kids don't know you're born. I had to stay inside playing Tekken 2 on Twitch for seven <laughs> bloody months. Because of the flu. Because of the flu. Yeah. I think we're past it being a flu, Fumby. Are you still clinging on <laughs> yeah. to, oh, it's just a flu? Right. After we've been locked down I mean, for fucking weeks. The new story is because I, I just couldn't take the information anymore. I figured, you know what? If we're going to die, at least let's have some dignity. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to die ignorant. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like he lived. Yeah. Let's go out like real people, okay? And stop all this information shit. So are you saying your knowledge of the coronavirus is still stuck in like January knowledge? <laughs> it's not that bad anyway. Only old people die, right? You know what? It was only till last night when they said Boris is an intensive care. I was like, shit, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was like, shit. Thing is, we can't have Boris die at this time, okay? It's not good for the nation. Nah. Right? We look weak to the rest of the world. <laughs> Couldn't even take care of a prime minister. It's not like your fucking hamster dying. To go, it's yeah. not like we didn't feed him. He went around shaking everyone's hands. What, <laughs> the the fuck what were we meant to do? Pile on him. Boris, stop touching people. <laughs> And it's the exact opposite. Bargain. We fed him with too Europe. much. That's why he's high risk. But how are we going to bargain with Europe if our prime minister dies from corona? They're, they're not going to take us seriously. We'll get another one, babe. It's not yeah, like yeah. we just don't... Like, the captain's been red carded. And so yeah. we're fucked. We'll get Theresa May back. <laughs> I think you stopped watching the news well before January. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm, 
I'm just panicking right now. And like, to be honest, <laughs> it wasn't really going well before. Maybe a sympathy vote is what we fucking need. Maybe we just need Germany to go, oh, you know, you guys have had it pretty hard, you know. How about we uh, trade with you at 20%, yeah? Oh, it's crazy, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That that's how Boris should use that. Boris should bring a ventilator to those EU meetings. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys. Um, yes, what were we <laughs> talking about there? I'm still, you know, I'm I'm, I'm very brave here. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine the tour after this? My battle with Corona. Yeah. <laughs> Told by David Atom. Oh my god. Yeah. There's definitely going to be some people like that. There's going to be like, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, one-person shows set just in a bedroom, you know. <laughs> Edinburgh's going to be lit next year. There's no excuse for a shit show next year, though. Like we've all had time. Uh, <laughs> oh, hang on, there is an excuse. Shit comedians. Oh yeah, there is that. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of people who are just bad and at I do, comedy. I do, I do see a lot of people trying out comedy after this. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Luckily, it's not a hobby they can take up right now. That's the one thing we've got to be thankful Well, you for. say that. I tuned into <laughs> the, the Comedy Store live stream of the Gong Show yesterday, oh, and man. Shit. What? It is <laughs> grim, man. You think seeing people going up there and bombing is grim? Wait till you see people bombing next to their stove. <laughs> that is the grimmest shit. <laughs> Dying on their ass while the partner's trying to bake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're bombing next to that Martin Luther King picture you got in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Just killing comedy, you know? Oh, that is brutal. I do want to watch like, that, to be fair. I'll watch that next week, definitely. That sounds amazing. So grim, I'm man. I'm going to be in the so comment grim. section heckling the bastards. Yeah. Their mom's <laughs> telling them to come for dinner. <laughs> Online is the, is the weirdest place to be right now. It's like everyone has something to say. It's like, wow. Yeah, we thought, we thought people were talking before. People are really talking now. <laughs> yeah, what I felt about the whole Boris thing like everybody feeling they needed to say, you know, whether they liked him or not, and then whether or not they hoped he died. And it's like, yeah. if, you, if you don't really like, you know, that you can just feel that and not say it, say like, yeah, nothing. Yeah. yeah, you can just not tweet yeah. that and like I think that that's the thing isn't it like the other day I got into a bit of a spat with somebody and I try really hard to avoid confrontation online because I just hate it yeah, yeah yeah but somebody was like slagging someone off and I, I sort of had to say to him I was like but babe and then he was going I thought we still have freedom of speech I thought I was allowed to disagree with you and I said like, you are but why do you have to slag someone off on the internet like just go and yeah. find someone you live with and tell them you think that they're a prick yeah. you don't just because you dislike someone like there's loads of people I dislike and things I don't like I see loads of shit on the internet that I hate exactly. I just move away from it like it's so weird to think that like for the historical record your opinion yeah. on everything has to be recorded. also like with boris like we, we've already very recently done a survey on whether people like him or not it yeah was, you know <laughs> we, we took everyone's vote and uh it turns out most people fans you know uh for some reason but like yeah like let me let's, let's send everyone a piece of paper that has two tick boxes i like slash dislike boris johnson and i hope he lives slash dies <laughs> let's send that out to everyone we'll do another <laughs> referendum i don't i don't, I don't think i mean I, I was kind of on the thing of man i don't want him to die during this period this is not the right time to die it's just the nation will not recover yeah, and also like there's the thing of like if you kill me now you make me more powerful than you could ever imagine but if he beats it, he's more powerful than we can ever. This imagine. is it, man. Like, what a, what a rating spike that'll be. Oh, my goodness. The Prime Minister beat Corona? Yeah, yeah man. That, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Your Prime Minister's wearing a bunker. No, I was on the front line. I shook yeah. every fucker's hand. I looked yeah. Corona in the face. Yeah. I looked yeah. it in the eye. Corona in the eyes. <laughs> I said, Corona, grab these nuts. Grab these cojones. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Corona, my cojones. That'd be the slogan tool. Uh, like I was, I was thinking, I want to get a t-shirt made, right? Because I keep when I go for a walk, I keep coughing. Because before I go for a walk, I smoke a load of weed, so it's nice, right? <laughs> so like, I, I, I keep coughing when I'm on my walks, and I want, like, I've already had Corona and like quarantined. I'm over it. I'm like, I'm immune now. I can lick what I want. But like, I'm not doing, obviously, I'm following the rules still just in case. But I just, when I see people getting really nervous, even if we're not close, like, obviously, I'm not getting close to anyone. But when I cough, people are like shitting themselves. I want a t shirt that says Stoner, not Corona. 
Hey! There we go. Let's like, get some merch going for all my staffers out there who are struggling. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did. You did get Corona, right? Did you get it? Did you get tested? It nah, was. Like, no, one, I'm not Idris Elba or Prince Charles, mate. They're <laughs> testing yeah. me. Or the tiger in the Bronx. Yeah, exactly, man. There's a fucking tiger <laughs> in a zoo getting tested before actual humans in Britain. Well, in light of the Tiger King documentary, they thought, you know, we had to do something for the tiger. They're having a moment. Tigers are having yeah. a moment right now. Tigers are in right now. Cats. Yeah. Your cats are in right now. Yeah, no, I, I didn't get tested, but I did speak to, well, a comedian who was a doctor until they were a comedian, which is the best I could do for speaking to a medical <laughs> professional. Um, and they, they they were pretty convinced. So, like, that's the best I can do. So I, I still assume, like, I still act like I haven't, you know, because like, I don't want to fucking kill anyone's grandma. So just because, uh, but I'm pretty sure I did. I had all the symptoms. It would be weird if I didn't, you know, right now. It would be a weird coincidence. But uh, until there's the antibody test, I've no fucking idea, basically. I, I hope I've had it, because if I just had a shit week where I couldn't breathe properly, then, like, you know, f and it wasn't Rona, I'd be fucking gutted. <laughs> yeah, I, ho I, ho I hope you've gotten it. Good luck. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, me too. Me too. I really yeah. hope I have had it. He's like, otherwise, I should not have been going to those sex parties. Man, have you seen Kyle Walker, what's been happening? Who? Kyle Walker. Like, he plays for Man City, right? He's not important, that particularly. He's a, he's a footballer. That's all you need to know. He, um, right, he, he had a sex party the other night with a... He, he like, bought, basically hired a load of ladies to come round to his house for an entertaining evening. Yeah. About uh, about six hours before he put out a video on the Man City channel calling for people to stay at home and self isolate. <laughs> the fact that those ladies went to his place that shows the how passionate they are about their, their line of work. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, it's the recession coming, man. You gotta you gotta stack up where you can. Yeah. Well, if I had the money, I'd do the same shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sneak some people in. Yeah. Also, like, if anyone would hire me to go to theirs, I'd totally do that. Have you seen the Instagram videos where these guys are rapping and the, and your girls are jumping in the live chat to twerk to twerk? Man, like, there's uh, there's honestly, this is a peak period for like uh, online sex work. It's absolutely through the roof. Like, fair play to them. People are like, you know, they're still hustling. Like, um, yeah, like, it's one area of business that's not been affected. So good on them for making their money, however they can. Um, I did see a woman uh, last week uh, rubbing herself on a on a pack of toilet roll, and I was like, this 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 is. I asked you not to tell anyone about that. <laughs> Yeah, that went viral. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this this pandemic's got too far. Like, you know, like when when the toilet the toilet roll was front and center as well. It was like blocking out her. I, feel, I really feel sorry for the celebrities really trying to connect with their audience by having fuck all to say. <laughs> <laughs> was... I've got a theory, right? I think I've realised why celebrities are all depressed is because watching them all on Instagram Live for the last couple of weeks. Have you noticed none of them have soft furnishings in their houses? They've all got these massive rooms with like marble sides and like one mm. sofa and a fireplace right in the middle of it. And it's like, get some fucking blankets and some cushions <laughs> and some clutter. I think this is why you're yeah. sad deep down. There's no like domestic stuff in your house. That echo would fucking kill me as well. Yeah, just cold feet all the time. You'd have to have slipper socks everywhere. <laughs> Brutal. My girlfriend is super against the idea of underfloor heating, just in general, right? She has, like, a vendetta against it. And we've got a cold floor in our kitchen. And, like, look, right, we don't own the place. We don't have money for underfloor heating. But I'm just, I'm just saying it would be better if it was there. And she will not have this. Like, I fucking love a bit of underfloor heating. I think that's a wonderful... Why, why does she hate it? Why does she hate it? I don't know. She's just like, oh, it's unnecessary. But, like, yeah, but, like, you know, loads of things are unnecessary, but they're nice. So you two debate things that you're gonna you're debating something you can't you can't afford. Yeah, no, not yet. You know, like we're we're glowing up, man. We're we're on the rise. Like oh, give so us a few years. If the under under um under floor heating comes into play, you wanna know that it's a it's an option. Exactly. I wanna I wanna right, make right. sure that it's it's on the table, it's available. When we okay, do okay. have the funds, I would like some underfloor heating. Okay, okay. You know it's the best thing, says, man. No. If she says no though, what what happens then? She's gone. <laughs> is she not paying for the house she's though? paying for literally everything yes. <laughs> okay. exactly. you don't get under floor heating fam yeah, no, you need I'm... a floor to have under floor heating <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no. on the floor. Yeah, so don't don't complain. I'm not complaining, man. I'm not complaining. Look, I don't like. I'm just like I'm trying to win around. Well, the Apollos at least. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck her on the floor once in the summer when it's warm, 
And then when winter comes along, you're like, remember that time where you fucked on the floor? Yeah, but wasn't that, that like, nice? That was when the when the floor was perfectly heated by itself. You're not helping me, eh, Nigel. No, no. So she remembers how it feels, and she wants to recreate that in the winter. <laughs> I mean, I think you really might be overestimating the power of my dick. Okay. <laughs> That's not a plan, fam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've been okay. together a long time as well. Like me and my girlfriend are like a long-term relationship. We're well past the stage of wowing her with sex. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. Also, I don't think anybody's ever convinced me on a plumbing situation by boning my face into it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about this radiator? How about if we fuck near it? Nope. Yeah. Still don't what want do you the think radiator. To the new taps? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, don't, doesn't, don't everyone do that? Doesn't everyone do that? I do. Like, but I buy a new La Cruz, eh? And there's four bathrooms set up in like a that shape. You don't go around banging in each one just to see which one's the most persuasive. Hey, I love my Nespresso machine and I'll do anything for it. <laughs> watching a porn and the plumber comes around and all of a sudden it's a sex and you're like that doesn't happen in real life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's no good really looking plumbers plumber. like have you ever seen a plumber like there is no one that like would walk in and women would immediately be like I'm fucking that guy <laughs> Because that's a next level of sexy as well for women to be like, I'm just going to fuck that guy. That You've got to be like beyond a 10. There's like three dudes in the world who have that sort of power like Idris Elba you know, you got to be that sort of level of attractive. Or, or who else? Who who else am I putting in my top tier? David Beckham. Yeah, probably Beckham. But I think he loses loses sexy points on the voice, like looks wise. But we're talking about looks anyway, though, isn't it? Right? You yeah, know probably. Uh, I don't know. Who who is another very sexy man? Um... The guy that plays Thor. <laughs> yeah, Jason Momoa, obviously. Yeah, Brad Pitt. All right, basic. Still in the game though. I think Brad Pitt's old school now, you know. Yeah. He's like a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> He's what like you say? If Brad Pitt came to fix your pipes, you're not gonna fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> like I would. That's what a story. Yeah, like that is true. Fuck him. That means he's falling on some real hard times. <laughs> yeah. I'd at least do some hand stuff. <laughs> Just for the anecdote. <laughs> Brad Pitt was, oh, I used to hate Brad Pitt because all the girls loved him, man. I was like, what the fuck, man? He's all right. Yeah, I don't think you and him were fishing in the same pond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. He wasn't even in my league. He wasn't even in my area. And they were flipping. He was fucking up my Was Brad Pitt rolling around Hackney just picking at women? <laughs> no, but all the women loved him, innit? Like, he was a global star. Yeah, so yeah. Brad Pitt. And DiCaprio hated those guys. Also, I would suggest if someone's like t ideal was Brad Pitt, like you are not gonna you, that Venn diagram of you and him is it's like you're not intersecting a lot. Sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, if you can have some DIY, I don't know. What people oh, are. it's DIY. I thought it was a didgeridoo. That would be fucking awful if you were locked down next to an Australian with a didgeridoo. Oh god. <laughs> I'm in Hackney, so you can't complain about noise. Nah, man. Nah, it's not worth it. Like, that's the thing. Like, I, 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 yeah, I've lived in a lot of areas like that where it's like, all right, that noise is happening. I'm not going to go have that conversation. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I'm the noisy one in this uh, building of flats because I just discovered an app. It's like House Party, but for karaoke. Oh, God, that sounds it's like Remote horrific. karaoke. It's a Chinese app. We, we, I love it. I love all the, you know, all the cheesy mandarin songs i grew up with and you just log in there you can go into any people's anybody's room all right and sing uh, with taiwanese people and i'll just be belting out adele and shit is there so, anyone is there anyone on youtube live currently watching who can get in touch with the authorities to have nigel's hard drive <laughs> checked because what what is what is going on nigel you've really broken man what do you mean you, no, you no, haven't it's, it's, uh, karaoke is dope. Karaoke is dope, man. Karaoke is dope, yeah. But, but you're not doing karaoke. You're sat watching people sing badly on your phone. You know, if you pressed another button, you could watch the actual singer sing it. <laughs> no, you you get to sing as well. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. oh well then. Oh, yeah. well, sign me up. And you hear, you hear, you, they put reverb on your voice. Oh, it's the best. How it's long, the best. How long are you spending on this app per day? Well, I've stopped now because my neighbors are getting really annoyed. But <laughs> before that, I was doing like five-hour sessions, man. Fuck, man. You, pick, you, you, don't, you don't see the other person. You hear them. And there's something weirdly intimate about that, you yeah. know? And then they're just singing. Right this is what you're going to talk about. 
Is that material? Yeah, this, is what, this is what it'll be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. probably. You talk yeah. about what you know, right? Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. <laughs> But like, are, so like, are your neighbours all right around there? Like, what, Laura? What are your neighbours like? What's your neighbour situation currently? Mm, we live in some flats where you can pretty much hear what everyone's up to. But like, it's the middle of Brighton, so everybody's up to sourdough and yeah, yeah, their yeah, media yeah. jobs. So it's, it's not Fair that enough. interesting. Now, nah, Fumby, what are yours like, man? Have you got good, decent neighbours? Because I live in a council flat, so I've got so much weekend. the same vibe. <laughs> Jail, jail, ex cons next door. <laughs> nice, man. Everyone's behaving though, because we have to stay locked down. Yeah, that's it. To be fair, if anyone's out on parole at the moment, they're going to be extra on behaviour. You know, the police are like roaming wild at the moment. So, like, can you even have a fight at this period? Can you, can you have a fight? Mate, someone tried. Someone tried to have a fight in the queue for Tesco the other night when I was there. It was fucking mad, man. Like, just this like drunk guy. Because this is the thing. Like, ninety nine percent of people are like following the rules and like doing what we're doing and all going. This is fucking mad. Let's all chill. But there's always like one percent of knobheads who are just so fucking thick that like there's nothing you can tell them because they're just fucking. And this guy was like drunk with his like, like they both like him and his partner both looked methy. They had that vibe, you know, like, like, like. I don't know what smi- spice smells like, but I know what it looks like. You know what I mean? Like they, this couple, like they were just fucked. And like, yeah, he was kicking off with this guy because he kept getting close to him. And this guy's got a mask and like gloves and all this because it's the middle of a fucking pandemic. And like, he kept moving away from him. And he's like, why are you moving away? What's fucking wrong with me, man? And it's just like, dude, it's a fucking pandemic. What do you think's wrong? Like, I've got the annoyed... Go for it, Laura. I was just gonna say, like that attitude has been so weird. The the week, the, you know, the last weekend that we were doing gigs, so like comedy yeah. sort of stopped a week before the official lockdown, yeah, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So that last weekend, the night before that, I was hosting the London Transport Awards and was already going, "This is fucking ridiculous that this is <laughs> happening." Like, and sort of was thinking to myself, like. Mm, should everybody involved in transport be in one room like and I'm hosting the awards I had to do like a speech and then like get an award and go and shake someone's hand and the very first guy comes up to shake my hand and I went oh actually I'm not gonna shake yeah. hands tonight if that's all right and he went why I was like what do you fucking think? Because I'm about to shake. I, if I shake hands with you, I'm about to shake hands with everybody in the room. Yeah. And then I'm just a little petri dish of gross, yeah. and I'm spreading it everywhere. And, but that, like, taking offence at it, you're like, dude, I'm not saying you stink. I just, <laughs> I don't want to get lung collapse disease. Go away. Yeah, people are mental. Like there was, there's a real attitude amongst like thick British people of being like, "Fuck it, right? We're tough. We're hard round here, right? Mm. We'll just fucking, you know, a bit of, like everyone's fucking panicking. It'll be fine." And it's like, mate, just because you were born in Pontefract doesn't make you immune, right? That's not how it fucking works. Yeah. <laughs> just because we, just because you support Sunderland, mate, doesn't mean. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can go out in winter without a shirt on, and you are very hard for doing so. Well done. Those tribal tattoos are sweet. But, <laughs> yeah, it's very crazy. But, like, so did, when you guys locked down, did you, like, lock down quick? Like, did you panic by anything? This is something I've been interested in. Have you, have you, have you? I was, have in, you... I was in Dubai. <laughs> Shit, man. I, I was getting back. That, that was my biggest fear because I because I didn't want to get stuck in Dubai. Yeah, my last weekend I was meant to be going to Poland. Thankfully, it cancelled, so I just stayed, you know. But so I, I get I get a text actually for a ninety nine club gig the day I get back, and I accepted it because I was like, nah, I don't mind performing, and I really thank God I did now because <laughs> I don't know you can't perform anymore. So I didn't really go into the panic mode because I just didn't understand what was going on. I think we did the same gig that night. Sunday was it a Sunday? Yeah, it was a Sunday, yeah. Ruby Blue, yeah, I opened. Saturday, man, was a Saturday. Oh, Saturday, okay, I did a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was flying, I was in Doha when all the shit went down because wow. I was flying on my way to Melbourne. I was supposed to do Melbourne. And then I was like, oh, let me transit in Doha for a couple of days, just relax there. And then I spent one night there. The next morning, oh, Melbourne Festival is cancelled. Wow. Yeah, get, get home ASAP. And I was, yeah, I just took the flight the same night, 2 a.m., flew back, and then spent the night at a friend's place because I Airbnb my flat when I'm gone. So I had to spend a night elsewhere. Then came back here, got a text from 99 Club. Did my, la- my last gig was 99 Club, Ruby Blue. Well, my last gig was another was a club in Stretton, but I was supposed to do new, I was supposed to do Old Rope on the Monday, and then that got cancelled, and then that was it. I've not gigged since that day, man. What was your last one, Laura? What was your last gig? Glasgow Glee. Oh, that's nice. Um, was it good? That's nice. 
Yeah, it was nice. The Friday night was amazing. It was like packed and it was this great atmosphere. And then on yeah. the Saturday, I think quite a few people that had bought tickets didn't come. And so there were a few empty seats and it just had that feeling like, mm. oh, should we be doing this a little bit? But yeah. yeah. My, my last weekend went a bit like that. It sort of tapered off. The Thursday of that last weekend was sick, right? I was in Skegness, and they do not give a fuck about shit there, right? They do not care what's going on. They just want to go to Big Bob's Fun Pub and drink apple sours, you know, like... So, like, everyone was just in there not giving a shit, and, like, it was just that proper, like, oh, fuck kind of feeling, but everyone mm. was just determined to have, like, one more laugh. I was comparing... And I spoke to some people on the front row, right? It was this group of, like, old guys. I was like, how do you all know each other, right? And it turned out that one of them was the leader of it. They were from a charity, and the, the charity's mission was to get over 50s out of the house. I was like... <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was just like, get oh, them no. back in! <laughs> the fuck are you doing just like that so that right if you think like you know we're all worried that our our career is over because of the corona could be fucking worse he's not doing that job now is he yeah no that last weekend i remember ringing my mum and she was taking my like 90 something year old nana to a 70th birthday party in liverpool from somerset i was just like yeah okay get all the old people together in one room cool 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 Like old people don't give a fuck though. Like old, like no. old people. Like to be fair though, if I was eighty four, I'd be happy popping off. Like it's just like I don't think they really realise that what the condition is because I don't think it sounds fun. But like old people just don't give a shit. Like my my grandma was fully like, pfft, like she didn't stop going out. She was like, I'm eighty four. She literally I think- she lived to. Yeah, this was it. She literally was like, I've had a good life. Now I'm asking, how long would you actually want to live? How what's long the, would I want to live? What's the good inning for you? Oof. If I look right, we'd all be surprised if I made like, fifty. How, what do you not want to go past because of the whole? You know, I just want to go out at this period. Yeah, like I, I think I don't know, like uh, somewhere in my seventies, maybe. I think eighties gets a bit ropey. I don't know, maybe in my eighties. I don't know, like 80s. maybe that's not nineties. Like I apparently, think... um, people in their like men in their nineties, a hundred percent of them get prostate cancer. So fuck that. <laughs> like it's just your prostate just gives out after ninety years. Just everyone's and like yeah, I want to keep my prostate on the inside if I can. <laughs> how about you, man? How, how long do you want to go? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I said ninety. Ninety. You 90, reckon man. ninety? You yeah. ain't making ninety. <laughs> ninety, man. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Laura? How long do you reckon? What, what do you reckon is a good innings? I don't know. I guess until I'm only left with the annoying people. <laughs> <laughs> do you know That's what I mean? It. Like, there's there's your people, and then once they've died, and you're just hanging out with the people that are left, mm. then yeah, you don't want to be like you don't want to be the last one in your friendship group, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make new friends when you're 93. Like, it's not going to be the same, is it? Yeah, you can. Yeah. If, you, if you go on TikTok, make some friends <laughs> with 14-year-olds. <laughs> and then when you're, when you're 90, they're, 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 they're 70. Nigel there with the Prince Andrew defense. Hey. <laughs> I was at Pizza Express. <laughs> For my 90th right birthday. <laughs> Pizza Express is fucking closed. You've got no excuse anymore. If you're 90 and your partner is 14, that's not even pedophilia anymore. That's that's just, you know. It's almost heartwarming. It's like, it's great grand pedophilia. (laughs) (laughs) It's just someone doing a good deed. You know? Uh, right. This is how to get cancelled when you're already cancelled. Oh is- shit! <laughs> oh yeah, like I'm, 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 try- I'm trying my best. Like I'm, I'm seeing it as a free swing at the moment. Like very much. Like I have been leaving uh, in in these podcasts. I've been doing like every day. There is something that will end my career in the future. So you know, like I, I, I couldn't Dude, give a isn't fuck. Isn't that what a podcast is for? Exactly, if mate. It, exactly. it listens to my podcast. I say a lot of crazy shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Interesting how. Comedy rises from this, like you know, like the Phoenix phase. Like, yeah, man. Interesting to see what what actually happens, because I don't know, man. I think people will have a. I hope people will have a more appreciation for live comedy again. Yeah, I think so. I think you're gonna see a real influx. I think in the short term, you'll have a bit of a re, uh, like a. Th- there's gonna be a lot more variety stuff. I think you're gonna see the return of a lot more sitcoms and um less like it's got very comedy drama i think mm. things like dairy girls mrs brown's boys like a lot of that quite short sharp escapism that's going to be big for a while because if you look at what happens under crisis like if you look at the link between i think it's superhero films and 
global economy every time there's like recession or a big international problem you get like this surge of superhero films so like they've been massive recently and the last time they were massive was when current affairs were awful um and if you look at comedies and stuff and things that were huge in the war it was like very much distraction escapism so i think it'll be that for a bit and then i think you guys would be surprised at how quickly it'll bounce back and people yeah. just want their regular stuff yeah yeah yeah, no, I think I think you're right. I think that we, there might there might well be a trend with that with, in stand up where maybe there'll be a move towards just um just being really funny. Yeah, you know? I, don't I know think, think people are going to want to hear sad stories. Want. Yeah, yeah, just I for think, a little bit. Just for a little I, bit. Yeah, I, I hope the fringe never returns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part, you know I'm you heard it here you. first, people. I'm almost with you, man. Like, when I've, I've seen a few comedians being like, I'm absolutely devastated about Edinburgh being cancelled. And to be honest with you, I couldn't give a fuck. It's so far down my list of things I give a fuck about right now. I think the two best case scenario, Fringe completely cancelled and comics with no new material, they quit. Yeah, it's not going to so, happen though, man. Like they're okay. fucking limpets. Like there's there's guys I there's guys I know in the north who've been not who have not written a joke in over thirty years. They're not going to change now. Imagine going on stage after this. Oh, the Middle Isle in a little. You can get everything there. <laughs> Holy shit! But like, I think that would be good. <laughs> I think people will want shit like that. But like, you know, like not that. Like we're done. Yeah. We're right. If any comedian sat at home thinking of, oh, I've thought, isn't it funny? The Middle Isle of Little. No, it's fucking not. No, it's no. not. Fucking no, stop, stop it. it. Stop it. Stop yeah. it. We've all. What are we you know. saying? What are, what are you saying? Everything's reset now. Like it's ground zero. All right. We reckon we should all be be right. Hack is gone. We'll just like <laughs> all do airplane but material. Like why? Why are you getting so tizzy about hack when the audience? kill themselves laughing at stuff like that because mm -hmm. they haven't heard it just because you have because no, your life is entirely comedy club because i care <laughs> about the art it's because i care no you about don't the art. yes fuck I... off i've heard your set and it's not art <laughs> you just want to pretend to be superior that some subjects have got more merit than others and they fucking haven't if it's making the people in front of you laugh then you're fine you think all like you, 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 is there nothing you see in someone where you just go oh fucking hell come on Oh yeah, like the stuff that I go, I don't want to listen to this, but if it's making the people in front of them laugh, then like that, I don't, like, and if it's something as inoffensive as the middle aisle, obviously if they're coming out with like some stuff that should have been left in the 1870s, then yeah, there's a problem. But if it's something as mild as the middle aisle and people, like some people only go to comedy once every two years so, and they're not glued to Twitter like we are because we need a rest from wanking for half an hour. So like, yeah. I think <laughs> if it's funny, it's funny. Yeah, Laura, it's just funny to shit on things. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that a big to element me, of it. As a foreign person, the, the UK version of airplane food, the, the little middle aisle, that, to me, that is your version of yeah. airplane food. You know, so in America, when they make fun of people making airplane food jokes, over here, we just shit on like the hack, whatever. Yeah, yeah. If it gets a laugh, it gets a laugh, you know? Yeah, like, I don't, I agree I don't with actually you. give a fuck. It doesn't it actually just... affect me in any way, you know? Like... What I was actually trying to say was, in terms of moving forward, in terms of your material, after this period, is it a thing where you have to try and find something to say because well you gotta I, change I, it up I, I can't lie to you i feel pressure going on stage because it's like what the fuck was i talking about before this that's relevant but i think that's what your bit will be yeah. that the, because that's your reaction to it that's yeah. what your bit will be going fuck what's relevant what's the point that will be no, your root no in there, Laura. that's my that's my panic you'll find them yeah you will man you will <laughs> like, i'm gonna get back to a 20 again i need a 20 fam like I'm, I, I don't think I'm gonna like vastly change my approach. I'm still just gonna do loads of jokes about jizz, but like I'll just do new ones. <laughs> about what? About you've jizz. got loads of new jizz now. Yeah, jizz, exactly. Oh, yeah, jizz. Yeah. Yeah. I think you'll be amazed that that like, it'll be like Brexit. You, like for ages, we all felt like we had to say something about it because it was happening. Mm. But you yeah. say one thing at the top to go, I acknowledge we were all locked yeah, exactly. down for three months. Yeah. And then you crap back on with your life. Exactly. Nobody's going to want to sit there three, three, 20 minutes about what we all did on our lockdown. Exactly. Because all we did on our lockdown was beg people to love us via the internet. <laughs> like, I think for Rob, it's going to be like, I got the coronavirus. Now my jizz tastes like bat soup. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow! <laughs> hey, he's been, you're saying you've not written anything new since the uh, since the virus started. There you go. That's a fucking belter. That's yours, though. I, I don't. I didn't get the virus. Thank you. There we go. There's <laughs> one free joke for me. Thank you yeah. very much. Pop that in the old. 
Yes. A gag, fuck it. Although the bad something might be funnier for me because I'm Asian. Yeah, there they're, is they're that They're all thinking it. it. They're all thinking it. But it might be funny for me because I'm racist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did a new material night with Ola on um, Sunday service. That was quite fun. I had to write some jokes for that. What, online? Yeah, we just did it online. So you did new material online. How was that? Yeah, it was just to Ola, innit? It was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was not... Um, it's hard, man, but you're trying to tell a joke and the other person's on the other line. It's like that delayed signal on the news. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, we're getting it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. There is a bit of that. And like, <laughs> you know, if I was going to pick one person, like, I'll definitely get Ola on this, but like, if there was one person I was going to pick to do material to, I don't know if I'd pick Ola. Like, he's not like, you know, he's not going to be like blowing up about stuff. He's such a like chill guy. Oh, do you know what? Because he, because we both understood this was online, he was blowing up. Right, right, right. Yeah, he's like kind of <laughs> bringing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, shit! <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> 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 Yeah, it was more like, um, but the thing is, like, you know, when you're delivering material that you're not sure of, yeah, you can't do it online because you just everyone can see you stuttering, like, um, um oh, so, yeah, oh, or, oh, yeah, that's rough. I think for new material online, why don't we just record ourselves delivering it to the camera and then send it to a friend? Then we save that heartbreak of seeing that the weird reaction or not you know we don't need to, it yeah. to be live anyway let's just record it send the mp4 the video file you can send it to 50 people it saves yeah, time that's true well I, I just think fucking wind it in until uh, comedy's back to be honest with you yeah like... I think that's what, <laughs> what I'm gonna do do you think people who use it on their credits like as seen on Robin Ince's their Type? home festival like <laughs> that yeah exactly yeah, like... Will, yeah. I don't think as anyone will use on... this show <laughs> <laughs> seen on house parties comedy section yeah but like there's gonna be people like oh i supported someone who they were on a zoom chat with yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. yeah. supported pumbi's live chat <laughs> yeah it's fucking unreal man like is it like that's gonna be yeah an interesting thing of people clawing back uh i tell you what i think this might be a, this might be a good time for our regular feature um do you have any weapons near you right someone is attacking you right now in your home do you have what weapons do you have yeah, to hand yeah i've got a sword <laughs> <laughs> hey. wow well laura you have fucking smashed this <laughs> why do you have that <laughs> keys for me she's got a fucking sword oh this is the best this is the best i could do keys like you're walking home at night and there's a scary man behind you <laughs> Laura's got a full on a sword that is nearly as big as her. I'm sorry, Rob, I can't pull out the nine milli. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to fit up my door in seconds. Yeah. <laughs> the nine milli, incidentally, is what he calls his dick. <laughs> hey, hey! It's funny because mine's got the nine vanilli. <laughs> Well, like, Laurie, well, you have absolutely smashed that category. Uh, well done. Oh, what's, like, what's, the, what's the other weapons you've seen? The other weapons I've seen, the best so far um, have been, like, various people have pulled out, like, tools. I, I've got a hammer in a drawer down there. Um, Simon Lomas is the current leader. He whipped out a, a machete, a crossbow, and a deactivated handgun. I always knew there was something weird about that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking packed. <laughs> he's, he's packing. How do we get blamed for knife crime? That's what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> when it's people like Simon Lomas. This is it, man. This is it. Laura's got a sword. Yeah. She's casually in her study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I'm no so... One's... Can you imagine trying to get that home, Fumby, from wherever you bought it from? Like Fumby going on Would the Would you like a bag? Two <laughs> <laughs> trench coats. Just... Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't make three fucking steps out of that shop before you were like tasered. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I saw I saw that clip of you talking to Simon, and then I saw him like bring out his weapons, and I have to say I'm so glad I was nice to him. Yeah, 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 man. <laughs> because it would be so easy to bully Simon just based on his natural demeanor. You'd you think know, that. but you I'm think so that, glad. Like, Lomas is hard. Like Lomas is small, <laughs> and like he seems like uh, like shy at first, but he's so like he is like bullet sharp and just like unfuckable with like the, the guy. The guy's uh, yeah, he's serious. Don't fuck with him. Oh, yeah, cool. never. Yeah. Yes, yeah, my respect. Apparently, you can just buy a crossbow, <laughs> which I didn't know until now. And I think it's a good thing I didn't know until now that you could just buy a crossbow. <laughs> yeah. I've been playing Tomb Raider, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down with the crossbow. Oh, yeah, man. You played Tomb Raider 2 trying to get a naked. Do you remember that? 
they've, 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 they've actually classed it up a bit. The, the big 3D titties have gone now. <laughs> <laughs> So made her in proportion for an action adventurer. Yeah, they made her look like a human being. You know? All right. Well, I'm out then. I'm not playing it. You can use those old as like, you know, like a uniform thing change. Yeah. You can go to the old models of Laura, Laura Croft. Right, right. Yeah, it doesn't Wasn't work. like the old Tomb, Ra- Tomb Raiders, like, wasn't, weren't her tits like triangles? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I remember. <laughs> yeah, that, that, did, that did not stop it having a powerful effect on me as a young man. <laughs> I never liked the game then, though. I didn't like the game then. I never played Tomb Raider. Until oh, I did, man. Tomb Raider 2 got fucking rinsed by me. Yeah, like, cool. yeah, I played that a lot, man. Just like mainly locking the butler in the fridge, and then uh, that's the, the number one bit of the game. But, yeah, it was great games, man. I love that a lot. It's been a nice thing, man. I've got back into gaming because of, like, you know, I've got time. So, like, uh, but I play weird games, man. Like, I, I don't play anything like normal. Like, people are tr- trying to get me to play, like, Call of Duty and that. I can't be fucked. I've been playing Thief Simulator. It's sick. <laughs> Let's go around. Ro- games, Laura. What, what? I was asking Laura, does she, does she play games? Um, very badly. <laughs> yeah, that's also how I do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Don't you hate when you're playing a computer game with a girl who's bad? Oh, oh yeah. God. No, I'm terrible at this. Do you know what? The thing I find really difficult, which my husband finds really funny, is that like I can't play games where you have to be the cameraman and the person. <laughs> okay. That drives me fucking mental. It's like, why have I got to do the camera and be so my you little point guy? It where you want to see? Yeah, but just bake it so that it's looking where I'm running. This is the just, first for time ages, I've heard. I'm just running around, and then I'm, all I can see is the grass because I've forgotten to like <laughs> the camera as well, and I can't. And that's when that's when I get out. Oh, I tried playing. I've tried playing so many games, and Tom got me one like called Zelda or something. Ooh, Zelda, sick, yeah. Oh god, oh, it took me about forty minutes to climb a tower, and then I got too close to the edge and fell off it and died. <laughs> just, well, this is the first time I've heard someone describing a first-person shooter as a cameraman. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, you, like you've got fucking Louis Theroux with you. <laughs> yeah. But Crash Bandicoot never, I never had to do the camera. Like, it, he just, it looked it where you needed to go. I like those kinds of games. Sure. Oh, you like the third person platform type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. My girlfriend's yeah. like this. She like panics with playing computer games. And like, it's not like, right, she's a software developer. It's not like, you know, she doesn't know what she's doing. It's just that she panics. Like, mm-hmm. like it's like if if, uh, if shooting starts happening in a game, she like screams and then like just starts randomly pressing things. She knows what to do. It just it scrambles her brain at these mm-hmm. moments. At the moment, I don't know if playing... you know what software developing is, Rob, but they're not similar at all <laughs> to Call of Duty. <laughs> it's basically the same shit, I think. Yeah. Like, it's on it's the computer. lines of words. It's on the computer. Same <laughs> shit. No, but I'm saying like it's not like she doesn't. You know, she, she's not. She's very smart, is what I'm saying. Uh, like you know, it's, and like, but yeah, as soon as she starts doing that, she panics. She can't on Animal Crossing at the moment. She keeps. I keep hearing screams when she goes near a spider that bites her <laughs> on Animal Crossing, a game for like five year olds in this nice gentle world. <laughs> and I still regularly, she's like, nah! it's like it's not a real fucking spider, right? I've been playing a lot of Overcooked. I quite like I that, that one. That game. Is yeah. it's just repetitive actions, and I'm quite good at that. It's more yeah, like a puzzle. You sort of got to get into a rhythm. You play together. Yeah. I love it. Like uh, we hundred percent did the first one, and the uh, Overcooked Two has just arrived today. So oh, we're Overcooked Two is that. great. Yeah, Overcooked Two is so much better than Overcooked One. It's a real jump up. Ah, oh, nice. I'm well excited for that then. So, what like, oh, you, you explain it, Laura. It's like um, so you can play it on your own, or it's much better communal what's that called multiplayer um and you're basically you're in like various restaurants making dishes to order um and uh yeah they're like they get increasingly harder so sometimes like the floor vanishes and like it's timing it's kind of like a puzzle yeah and you have to sort of like do things in certain routines so like the game will be like um you'll have to put like um chop up meat and then put it on the pan to cook it and then when it's cooked you got to get it onto a bun and put lettuce on it and give it to someone else and they put it on like and so you've got to like do actions in time with each other so one of you will be doing the meat then they'll move over and do the lettuce and like you just sort of get into these rhythms it's fucking great infuriating so intense like we end up shouting at each other like get the fucking plate get the plate and like yeah (laughs) 
it's I'm great. banned from throwing things. <laughs> and if there's water, Tom's character goes across the water because my character falls in a lot. Oh yeah, that's the, that's the thing. Like she panics on the water as well. Yeah. Yeah. Why are women scared of water? I don't know. Like in my case, I I don't um I, I just didn't grow up playing computer games. We didn't have a console at all. Yeah. I remember we had my friend's PS2 for one summer holidays, and I played Abe's Exodus. Great game for an entire summer, but. Like so, that's why that kind of game, where is it third person? You said it was like basically. where you, yeah, yeah. That, I can play that. But as soon as it's more like, I remember playing Spyro once as a kid and being like, "Nope, they're behind me. I can't <laughs> handle stuff being behind me." I recommend Cuphead <laughs> or if you like two D platformers like that. Cuphead is the one. It's oh, okay. really hard, but it's like beautifully like they drew uh, like hand drew all the characters in it, and it looks like an old timey like nineteen thirties animation and like it's, you can get you can download it on like any console i think it's fucking rock solid but it's really fun it looks beautiful there you go recommendation for you something to pass the to fucking time or euro <laughs> truck simulator do you play games major uh not not really man keep no but i i, I might start <laughs> i might start doing karaoke yeah, I'm too busy doing karaoke have so. you taken anything up nigel have you taken up a new hobby in the lockdown no, I bought a book, but I haven't even started reading it. What have you been doing? I have been <clears throat> playing karaoke. Keeping myself busy. Like no, I. The more time you have, the more, the more time things will take. The more time you wait. You feel that? Like yeah, now, I when I go grocery mean, shopping, I love it when there's a line because I'm like, oh, now I can hang out outside for, yeah. for like an hour. <laughs> so I, I'm just, I've just become really slow at doing everything. I wake up and I, I just spend too much time procrastinating, and I, I, I podcast. I guess my own podcast of that keeps me busy. And right. my videos, but that's it. And TikTok, TikTok. I've TikTok. taken up TikTok, I guess. Fair enough. Like, yeah. So, you know, you're not trying to improve yourself in any way, then. No. no. <laughs> I'm perfect as I am. <laughs> if it takes a pandemic for you to pick up something, you never really wanted to do it anyway. That's fair. That's what I feel. Yeah. It's a side chick, man. You're picking up a side chick. I can't say that on on here. That's illegal. You know. <laughs> Like, no comment, no comment. <laughs> Fumbi, have you started any new hobbies, any new activities? Yeah, man, I've started giving up. <laughs> <laughs> I man, thought you had been doing that your whole life. Yeah, you gave up a long time ago, Fumbi. <laughs> I started doing that. No, um... Wait, didn't you record a special? Where is it? Is it out yet? It's coming out, man. Oh, man, cool. Yeah, get that out while everyone's at home, innit? Like, it's perfect yeah. time to drop it. I'm literally in the last edit, so yeah. Nice one, man. That'll be that good. So it's going straight to YouTube, that, innit? Hey, I had to watch this. I've, I have, I've had, I've had trouble watching it. It's hard at the moment, isn't it, man? I tried to edit a clip of my stand-up, and it made me real oh, sad. Yeah, now you know how we feel when we watch you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I just want to know how you guys feel about that. Can you watch yourself back? Like now or in general? In general. In general, I'm all right with it now because I've made so many fucking videos and stuff. You sort of get used to it, and you know, like I really like what I do. <laughs> <laughs> But no, like I'm, I'm all right with it. But like I do record way more sets than I listen to. Like I record uh, like fifty percent of my sets. I'm like, if I think I might do something new, I record it. But then I listen to like one in a hundred. You know, like I I don't really like struggle with it that hard though. I think like when you we record yourself, like I record myself a lot. I do a lot of like stuff. So I've kind of got used to it. It's not the most comfortable. How about you, Laurie? Do you you, you all right with it? No, I hate it. Because it never looks as good back as it felt when you were oh. doing it. So yeah, you, you, you remember yourself smashing it and then you watch it yeah. back and you go, oh yeah. my God, is that my voice? Is that, oh. I, miss, I rushed that joke. Oh my God, slow yeah. down. Why are you sweating? Oh, yeah. oh, you forgot to say, like, it's better when you phrase yeah. it this way. I get, I get mad at the audience too. Like, what the fuck are you laughing at? This is shit. Whereas no, when I'm on stage, I'm like, give me more, you That's what I'm at. I can't take it. The other day, I watched literally myself walk on the stage and I just came out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> I said, boom. I said, boom. Especially in an English show or like a long special where mm. you're like, like if it's a 20, at least you know that the gags are coming, boom, boom, boom. But in a in an Edinburgh show, you're watching about and going, why was there three minutes here where, and then you go, oh, because it paid off and it was this yeah, and it was yeah, that yeah. later. But, oh, God. It's yeah, like, I'm, like, to be fair, my shows don't really have any point. So, like, that's, that is that is sort of, like, salved a bit by the fact I'm just saying what I think is funny for all of it. Like, so, like, there isn't, like, there's nothing to pay off because there's no build-up no build because there's nothing to pay off. It's just this. <laughs> 
So like my, my, my sets are like a techno set. You know how some people like they love like uh, you know it's just bump 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 laugh laugh laugh. It's like you know we're not going anywhere. We're not learning anything. There's no fucking lyrics. There's no subtext. It's just we want to get we want to have a laugh. That's it. That's me. I'm a te- on the techno vibe. It's a great special though. I really enjoyed it. Oh, I watched it. Thank yeah, you yeah. very much, man. Cheers. Like, yeah, like I'm really proud of it, man. I really love it, and like I'm really glad I've I've made something. You know, like it was what I like. Cause I think like specials are what it's all for. Like for me, like they're like your, I don't know. That's your like um, it's your album. Like you know, it's your painting on the wall. It's your this is what I do. You know what? It's interesting you say an album because that's one thing I had to remind myself when I watched this. It. Like it's your first album, you know. And it's your early work. You know, you want to drop a reasonable doubt slash, you know, Eminem classic on your first try, but it's not really like that because yeah. I don't even think they were thinking I'm about to make a classic. So I kind of had to take myself away from the, you know, the attachment to the to the yes. product. Yeah. And like at some point, it's just got to be done, and you just got to let it go. Yeah, it's got to get out, and because I, I literally I'm onto the next already because Corona's changed everything. Yeah, man. Know? So I'm already onto the next idea and what I'm going to do next when I come out of this. But yeah, it's. Now I'm just more comfortable with, I guess because we got so used to a world of viral and amazing videos popping in a second, you seem to think that you want yours to go to the same road. Mm. But you kind of have to remember, you know, everything's just different. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I think there's a lot of like real um, good stuff in the slow rise on the internet, right? Like I'm so into internet comedy and I'm like, you know, it's everything. But I think the slow grind like actually has some like really positive benefits in that if you really early, if your first video pops off online, right, and it goes massively viral, you've got nothing for people to find like behind it. Like uh, Laura recently like absolutely smashed it on Twitter. Like with they, uh, you'll have seen like uh, if you, you must have seen Laura's Jurgen Klopp tweets. They were so fucking funny. Like um, and they they banged off, but like when people like the, the reason I think that Laura got so many followers off that. Uh, you correct me if you think uh, differently, Laura, at any point. But I think it's firstly that you showed your skill in the writing of them. But also, when people search you, if they click on you, there's loads to find. You can find places to watch you. You can see you being brilliant. So it's not just a fluke. They see it's not just one thing. So they follow you because they know there's going to be more good stuff. Yeah, I wondered that, actually, because I've had stuff go viral before and not had that kind of follower. Mm. Like... You got so many followers off that, didn't you? Yeah, I, I think... I got 32,000 followers. Mate. Wow. Mate, like, I've not been on Twitter. What happened? I just, I, it was that weekend I was at Glasgow Glee and I was um, fucking about on Twitter and I started doing this like viral, th- well, this thread of like, um, if I was married to Jurgen Klopp um, and just like fantasizing about being married to somebody really sensible and it just. Yeah, it's sort off. of like, it was like erotica about Jurgen Klopp and it was so funny. Yeah. But sort Jürgen of like Klopp very, t- pardon? Did Jurgen Klopp retweet you? No, he's not on Twitter and he has not commented. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, I think because it was escapism. Sure I think because it was that weekend where everything was starting to kick yes. off. And, um, and so people just and wanted a laugh and it had nothing to do with Corona. But I'd said like, because when I started tweeting it, obviously I only had 8,000 followers and it was like midnight on Friday night and I was dicking about and a couple of people were chatting and I was just like oh I'm really worried like because I that night I'd like got the overnight train up to Glasgow and was feeling all like should I be out on public transport blah 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 so I said like I'm really nervous about what's going on in the real world but what's keeping me sane are these like fantasies about Jurgen Klopp um but yeah like the that's been really weird for me like on Twitter because I love Twitter I'm on Twitter all the time and I've always used it as like a real like favorite social media yeah i like it and but that it's been so different it's like just as lockdown happened my online experience changed massively and then like that's been the thing for so obviously like gaining thousands and thousands of followers for one thing i now like second guess everything i tweet going like there's going to be a severe drop off everything i tweet that's not clock related because getting that many things for one thing you're suddenly like shit is anybody here for the rest of this or is it all just for that here's where you filter them now like you might well not keep all of them but that's good like there's a lot of people Mm. like you don't need all those people right you're set now online you've got such a great following you've got a career there boom done right you can like tore off that like more to like more people you're set don't worry about losing some of them. They weren't the ones who were going to buy your shit, come to your shows. You're going to lose a few. Fuck them. Mm-hmm. Let them go. It's interesting, isn't it? The online approach. Like, 
because I don't like trying to game it, you know, like, mm. you know, there's people that are like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this too much and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And like the other night I had the nicest night I've had on social media. I, I like tweeted, I was like, look, I'm really missing gigging. Can you guys heckle me? So people were like tweeting me like, when's the comedy going to start? And then yeah. I was like quote tweeting them with like, when I take your dad's dick out of my mouth and can finally tell a joke, you know, yeah, like yeah, just yeah, doing yeah, classic yeah, yeah. slams. And I think I lost about 200 followers Brilliant. in about two hours <laughs> and was like, yeah, fuck off. Because if you don't want this, like, this is the happiest exactly. I've been on Twitter in exactly. ages. And you've got to get rid really of those fun. people. Because all those people are going to do is be in your fucking replies complaining. They're not going to be at your shows enjoying it. They're not going to yeah. be buying your shit. They're not going to be subscribing to your fucking Patreon or whatever. They're just going to be in there going, actually, I didn't quite like it when you said that. So fuck them. Fuck them off. Anyone who complains even slightly about a joke gets fucking muted on mine. I like, do you mute or block by the way I think that's an interesting one I like muting I mute because I like to know that they're shouting into the void yes, at me exactly, <laughs> exactly I like the thought of people sat at home going um, actually I didn't like that and they're just yeah. it's going nowhere and they don't know some woman the other day was super mad at me because I was like pro trans rights yeah. and I was just like you oh monster. sweetheart I'll just mute you you can scream at me and then at least you're not screaming at somebody else but like waste your time baby girl <laughs> yeah totally at least the way to go but um, yeah don't second guess yourself fuck it like you know if people leave people leave like I always I like I, I, I sometimes sometimes people follow me who I like respect or like I'm like oh they're not going to enjoy my Twitter but like I can't like fundamentally change it so like yeah I'm sorry <laughs> you're getting a lot of Leeds United memes I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> Like I I do regularly like uh, put on my Twitter like do if you follow me for comedy mute these words if you follow me for Legion United stuff mute these words and try and filter <laughs> it down so people can get which bit they want I, I don't know you just can't give a fuck I think like you just gotta no. be genuine but I think like when your world boils down like the last three weeks you know your world has boiled down to your phone mm. essentially and your income has boiled down to what you can do on your phone and put out on your phone I think it's quite interesting how to stay sane in that situation like I, I feel like at the end of last week the sniping online had like crept up because I'm really friendly and I'm quite interactive with people yeah. and I like it like that and if anybody's ever negative to me I just ignore it like I because I, I don't like pylons and that was something mm. I really clocked quite early after getting a load of followers with somebody was a dick and I just said oh babe I don't think I really deserve that and suddenly there was this pylon and I was like sure. oh shit right interesting that's on me to know that I can't mm. do that anymore because it will have that effect um but uh yeah and uh, like towards the end of last week i suddenly noticed like all oh, people are getting a bit frayed with each other <laughs> like yeah. it's a bit like the end of preschool like the end of the day yeah well people have got nothing better to do than get wound up by that and people are tense naturally anyway and worried and scared and like you know and then that all pours out of this yeah like, you know into yeah, that's it's... why I think that that attitude online that like why the fuck are you moaning all you've got to do is stay at home and you're like no you haven't you've got to stay at home and worry that you and your loved ones are going to die and that you yeah. can't pay the mortgage and that you can't go yeah. out and buy but it's not just staying at home yeah, you yeah, yeah. fucking idiot there's a lot of fucking shit it's going on staying at home and worrying that your entire life as you know it's gone and yeah. sure just because oh. you're not like on the front line doesn't mean it's not difficult like, like it's the unknown up. that's what everyone I'm afraid of the unknown I hate yeah. this is the one time like I don't know yeah like I don't know like and you can't do anything to improve it it's nah. all like as someone that's had a lot of therapy <laughs> like, like they like, say like your us, what if worries like worst comes to us I always you know I get that text from James you get the 99 club I'm good for the weekend yeah. I don't know right now yeah 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 <laughs> like, no one's texting yeah, certainties are gone, man. I've just moved back up north, and I was like, ah, well, fucking beautiful. Like, I will never have a weekend free again. Like, because you know, I'm getting like, I'm around all the people who'll just text me if they need someone. So I'm like, I'm fucking sorted. And like, uh, yeah, that just uh, that that crumbled immediately. It is weird, like you know, like especially because we've all done the same thing of working, like you know, in order to get a career as a comedian, and uh, like it's it's a long, hard process, no matter who you fucking are. We've done all that. Or who you are fucking. Well, no, that can help, (laughs) I think. Or hinder. (laughs) I think it's only ever hindered my career, I'll be honest with you. Um, I've burnt some bridges with my dick. Uh, But, uh, like, you know, it's... it's, After, like, working that hard, obviously, it's going to be a worry 
if like you know if, like if that might all change i think like look what i would say is no one on this chat is going to be in fucking danger right like it's going to be it's going to be there's going to be people who don't get working comedy anymore and like i think we're just about to an asteroid's about to hit earth we're about to have a bit of darwinism in the comedy circuit oh you never know i might do my first live stand-up show and decide to quit afterwards <laughs> so, i'm going back to streaming fuck this bullshit yeah <laughs> I'll go stock shelves at a Waitrose. Yeah, Waitrose. Just, fucking, you, you fancy yourself, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I just need this. Um, I just need the audience to allow me to want to fail. I want to fail on stage, you know. Yeah, no, I think I, they, they, they'll give you that chance, man. Like, I want the love right now. I want the failure. Yeah, I just want to go stock shelves in the middle aisle at an Aldi, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll fix the problem. Just put normal shit in yeah. there. Yeah, I'll put, put cereal on there. Tins try, of beans. Try to joke about that, fucking hacks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, guys? Like this has been absolutely beautiful. We should probably wound this up because I will just I will happily talk to you three forever. Like I'd love you to come back on. I'm gonna be like I'm doing six of these a week till we can go outside. So I'm gonna need <sighs> fucking guests. So uh, do please come back on. What's that, man? Do you, do you upload it anyway? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Like, so I stream live on YouTube and then um, I like clip, uh, like, you know, I, I make sure I put it on there, the whole thing, and then I'll put out social media clips and all that. I'm not bothering putting it out as an audio podcast because who's listening to him right now? People are watching video, so I'm just doing it as video. Um, but I will send you all the links and everything. I'll tag you all on tweets and all that. But before we go, uh, we'll give you a, a, each a little bit of time, like, as long as you fucking want. I don't give a shit. I'm not like, we're not going anywhere. Tell people about uh, where they can find you, what you're up to what you want them to watch all that sort of stuff uh we'll start with you laura um you can find me on youtube uh at laura lex comedy i'm on twitter at laura lex instagram at lex laura and uh you can watch two of my specials at next up comedy if you use the code i love laura you get a free trial there we go lovely stuff you could also use the code popular which is my one i don't give a shit use laura's um like i've, I've no idea if i don't think anyone has ever doesn't, doesn't give a shit but i had to say it just... had to say it anyway i'm on there on next up uh you know covering a lot of platforms but i uh, definitely do subscribe to laura on here like uh she's fucking brilliant uh thanks so much for having uh, for coming laura it's been wonderful to have you as ever uh next up we'll go uh fumby tell them about yourself mate where can they find you um at fumby on all platforms well fumby on Motayo on instagram and um yeah just look out for my special coming very soon and um just yeah when we get out <laughs> when we get parole i'll see you guys in the streets nice one man thanks for coming man really appreciate it and nigel tell them about yourself man yes at mr nigel ng m-r-n-i-g-e-l-n-g -E on all platforms if you're watching this on youtube i have a youtube channel give it give it a give it a sub ring the bell and also find my podcast it's called rise to meet you on all podcast platforms and on YouTube also. Awesome, man. Thanks so much for coming, guys. It's been an absolute beaut. Uh, I'll do my little plug you now. Uh, I'm here every day, 4.20 p.m. with uh, different guests every day. Who have we got tomorrow? Tomorrow we've got uh, Sarah Callahan, Liam with Nail, and Will Duggan, so that'll be lovely. And then on Thursday, we've got a like, mad lineup. We've got Paul Smith, Kay Curd, and Adam Rowe. So fucking yes, come at me, YouTube views. And uh, right, uh, so uh, subscribe here so you find all those videos and catch up. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Rob Mulholland. Uh, I've got a special as well uh, that will pop up in a second on the end screen. If you just want to click that button, you can have a little watch of that. That'll pass an hour nicely. Uh, in the meantime, though, I think that's just about everything. Thank you for coming on, guys. Uh, we'll see you very soon. This has been Living La Vida Lockdown. We can't go outside. Living La Vida Lockdown. <laughs>